Greetings. Hey, it's Susie Q. Just came out of Vegas on a beautiful holistic uh, seminar in Vegas. 15 hours of biochemistry. I can't really process it, but I go. I just continue to uh, gain higher insights. Okay, so um, have you ever noticed when things are kind of like funny within the house or with the land that you have or the other places that you go, do you ever notice that there's some other kind of strange things that are happening um, with a house or with a place or just simply being on the land? And so I've got this great um, energy that I've been really processing and I've been so busy, it's been take, it's taken me a little while to go ahead and just do this a video because we've been uh, busy in Vegas. So anyway, this is something that has come to my attention and I have so many different ways of looking at the land anomalies, the land anomalies. And so sometimes people think, well, there may be spirits in the house, there could be some other things going on. But when I really look at these energies, uh, what is uh, land anomalies? Uh, sometimes we can clear some of those energies and we can also uh, process um, exactly may, maybe what happened. But when, we, when we're looking at the past, we, we, you know, it's already gone, it's already done, but sometimes we have to go back again, uh, kind of like as an echo and just continue to just do a clean sweep. Uh, of that energy. So I've got a few examples here of land anomalies that we really can't explain or understand or totally discern. Is this right or is this, uh, what, what is this energy? What is this energy that is impacting people's experiences with the land or with places? But I always say it was just working with land. So I had this one experience back in Houston um, before I left Houston, and this person had was able to see kind of an aberration of somebody or some sort of form of spirit or, so, or some form of energy, and she would see it in the house. And a lot of the energy was kind of related to, uh, and this was like, a, like maybe a three or four level um, home that they had uh, that, down there in Texas. And so it was pretty fascinating. But what we really kind of found was uh, overall, we had a nice conversation. We got to kind of look at things. And um, we just kind of realized that there was, there was definitely some uh, hanger honors, <laughs> some other spirits that were still hanging around uh, in that space. Now, uh, back then, it was probably in the early 1900s when it happened. So it wasn't in this beautiful, you know, four-level property. Um, but that's what we, start, we started to notice is that it wasn't the building or the structure, the current structure, but we started noticing and observing that um, let's just say that everything was kind of uh, taken away and they put new buildings in, new structures in, and then there you have it. You got that land, you got that land mass. Uh, and so, so let me just tell you a little bit more about that. So when that person uh, was at her house, she could see, like I said, kind of like ghosts or, you know, some sort of, you know, energy beings or something like that. And then, um, so I went there and we kind of talked about it. And what I was really getting uh, with the energy, and there was also another group that came in to kind of process what was happening with that land anomaly uh, with spirit or with ghost or with something else. Something else is showing up, right? And so we, we discerned that there was a little boy um, and what we discerned also was that he was in kind of a tub, you know, because this was early, early, uh, early 1900s. And um, his wife had gone away and the father was taking care of the young boy. And something must have happened where he had to step away from that tub with that little boy. And then we really found that uh, there was um, a tremendous amount of grief because when he walked away, the little boy, he... Um, he died in the tub. And so these are kind of interesting and strange things that show up. But what we found was, you know, that little boy was there. But I, when I first was at her place, I started noticing that there was a little boy. But then eventually we learned the grief was really, it was really about that that dad. And so with a group of uh, folks down there in Houston, we got to have a little bit more consciousness. And we, you know, started really noticing that we could clear that energy. And again, it wasn't that building or structure uh, that she had, but it was related to the land itself. So that I think after that, all of those energies had receded from her consciousness and she wasn't having any of those feelings or notions or any uh, 
just kind of looking at some of the spirit, you know, the spirit that's still there. So I think we've kind of cleared that. So that was a really neat thing when we look at land anomalies. And so if there was structure there or something new, um, it, that's, it's still holding in that energy of um, the sadness of a loss of a child. Okay, I have another one too. So I do Q, uh, quantum healing hypnosis technique. I had a, a, a person come in and we got to, we had a little, part of the interview was talking about some things at the very beginning. And I think at the end of our session, you know, we do about two or three hours of an interview. Then we go into an induction, getting, you know, relaxed and feeling, you know, calm and, and spaciousness. And then we go into the, uh, the past lives our future lives, concurrent running timelines, as above, so below, and we could go into the subconscious. But at some point, we started to have this awareness that um, she was uh, she was um, new to Arizona, and she had a beautiful historic home on the East Coast, and it was a beautiful home. They it was it was fully restored and beautiful. Uh, I could imagine all the beautiful trees, and there was a creek behind there, and all of these things were showing up. And it was a I think a husband and a wife. And they just started noticing that they just absolutely loved the house and they had no awareness of anything else. So then they decided to put the house on the market in the East Coast. They came back here to Phoenix and they're in a rental property. Maybe have already bought another house. But what was interesting is, is that over time they kind of learned that 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 beautiful property and it's kind of like a, this is kind of like a beautiful historic home and you could kind of walk down the street and go get you know go to a cafe or you could go just see a little movie theater and you know you could just walk into town and have these great experiences but eventually they found out I don't know that they knew that at the time when they bought that historic home but there was a, a massacre a massacre of of people and I can't remember all of the story about that, but um, it, there was a huge massacre, and I think it, I can't even get into the story because I can't remember exactly all the details, but it was kind of a slaughter, you know, with some of these um, these other people that were, um, I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to explain it, right? But there was a slaughter there, and I think that eventually came to be known in that town that that's what that was, and I think there was a small marker there. And so with that energy, with the land, um, and I think at that time that that house was still there, it was still like a, you know, like a historic home. I think that house was still there, but they, I think when they bought it, they didn't really know that it was, you know, kind of a, a um, kind of a sacred ground, you know, sacred, uh, a sacred space. And so they just decided just to, and I don't even know if they've even had it sold yet, so it's pr really pretty interesting. But with we, when we start working with these energies, it could be structures, it could be people, it could be things, it could be spirit, it could be um, whatever you whatever you consider it to be. But we found that that energy was really. Um, really you know it was it was it was not helping them because they wanted to sell the house the house was beautiful and so i think we did some level of clearing with that beautiful property and again there was creeks and beautiful trees and it was just charming and so we were able to do a little bit of clearing through that with quantum healing hypnosis technique. And I think after that conversation, I think she felt a little bit lighter, a little bit brighter. And I haven't heard back from her since then, but I know that she's probably getting some better results from that, that experience by looking at the land itself. So you know, if you're talking about the house, the historic home, I think it was really about the land because there was some sort of... Um, a feud, there was some level of a feud, and I can't really discern exactly what that was, but that's what happened on that land. And then sometimes we get the results that it's going to be better, that the house is going to sell, the house is going to sell. All right, I have another one too back in Houston. And I had a friend, and she was at, this is about a commercial piece, though. Uh, so I was a real estate broker for a long time. Um, anyway, so I went to the restaurant, and I thought we were just going to have a cup of tea or something. And then she just, uh, this woman that owned it, you know, there wasn't much traction. There were not that many people coming in. And so uh, we just had coffee. We just talked, and she just said, I wish I had more people coming in. And so with that energy, and I can't remember all of the details because it was a while ago, but we were able to kind of clear some of the energy. So it was like a, like a shopping center, you know, it's like a regular shopping center. But there was something that was connected with um, like a scarce or uh, a scarcity consciousness or something at that level. And there might have been 
a land anomaly that might have attached to some of the energies in her space. It was like a really quaint, uh, I think she was from uh, maybe South Africa, I can't remember, but she was so, you know, she was so frustrated because people weren't coming in. So we just did a little bit of clearing, and a lot of the times when we do the clearing of energies, and you could say it's the space or the retail shop or the restaurant or whatever, or you could just say it's the land. And whenever I look at that land energy, I really kind of realized that, you know, that uh, people have been here for so many years and in all kinds of different civilizations have maybe been in that er general area. We can't really discern exactly what happened, but we can at least go in and we can process that land. And then we can also go in there as a beautiful presence of clearing some energies from inside her a cafe. And so after that, I mean, I think she had a wonderful experience with that. But sometimes people don't know what to do. Like, what, what's wrong? How come it's not working for me? How can I, how can, how come I can't, you know, sell this house? Or um, how can I get rid of some of these things, these apparitions? Uh, I can't even know what they're talking about. Uh, some of these ghosts or some of these other souls that are there. So we're able to clear these things. And sometimes it's a process because some people can't really realize that there's these undercurrents of energy energies that are kind of hovering you know they're always kind of hovering uh, in the field and then sometimes we are we have the capacity to go ahead and clear it and sometimes if we clear it and it's like totally totally clear we have an opportunity to go into what I call an echo. It means that it's already done. It's already in the past, baby. It's already in the past. It's not in the future now, but it's already in the past. An echo may come in. I call it an echo energy. And it's just kind of like reminding you that, you know, if you kind of get stuck in that story again after it's been cleared, it's kind of like, you know, you're stuck like Chuck, right? You know, but when you start working with the echo energy and if you don't get triggered by it again, then you made a, you made a hundred percent on a pop quiz. So we call those pop quizzes or the echo energy. So the more that you focus on the past and talk about it and share and all these different things, you're kind of back in that story and then you may get triggered. Like, boom, I got triggered, you know? So all of these energies are powerful. They're very succinct. Um, we could go uh, really fast with some of the energy but sometimes people need to, to share what they need to say. They need to uh, process some of the experiences and they and it's kind of challenging their beliefs. Like, can we get rid of this or can we have a better experience with prosperity, abundance, miracles? So when we start kind of noticing when some of those energies are already gone, you know, they're already gone, it's already done, is that we have better results with whatever that we're seeking. You know, selling a house, having more uh, patrons at a cafe and um, all these other experiences. So all of these energies are very, very powerful. And I really acknowledge each each and every one of you, I think in some level, you've already been doing this work. You may not, it, there, there's all different terms and words that you could use to have a better experience with what you're seeking and the benefits of it as you move through your energies. And the more that you move through the energies is you start noticing, I feel lighter. I feel lighter right now. I feel lighter. I feel brighter. I feel confident. You know, I feel really acknowledged for my willingness to say yes to look at different ways and perspectives of life. So I think that's it. I've been wanting to do this for like five days, but I've been in Vegas and doing all kinds of stuff. So, but I'm super excited to share this with you. And if you ever have any questions, I do the QHHT, the Akashic Records. I do all kinds of other, you know, I'm going to do a psychic reading tomorrow. I'm going to have a couple guys come in. But there's all this fun stuff that's happening as we continue to persevere and learn new things help others and really what I really really do is I want to help everybody feel a little bit lighter in their body and really start acknowledging I love myself I love myself just as I am and all my beauty and all my magnificence and really I think that's really what it's all about it's all about love it's all about love 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 okay so I think that's it for now we'll see you soon and namaste